In the previous lecture, we have discussed in detail the aspects of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. If you remember, in orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, the idea was to put your data in parallel narrow band frequency channels and in this way, you are able to parallel, parallelize transmission into several easy to equalize channels. In this lecture, we are going to use GNU radio in order to come up with an FFT based implementation of the OFDM system. We will show that by parallelizing the channels in the frequency domain, we are essentially getting rid of the effect of the intersymbol interference to a reasonable degree because you are splitting it into parallel channels. But this intersymbol interference of course manifests in the frequency domain as different gains. We will do this with various PSK or QAM modulations and see how OFDM modulation affects the receiver design. In our exploration of OFDM by first building a traditional system that does not use OFDM and then gradually add the OFDM related elements. So our first task will be as usual grab a random source and once we place the random source we will use QPSK therefore we will set the maximum to 4 and use the byte data type. Next we will grab a constellation object and encoder so control F or command F and type constellation and we will get the encoder also connect these up we will make the constellation my const and we will make this object use my const and we need a throttle control F or command F we'll say throttle we'll connect the throttle next let us also grab an RRC um, an RRC kind of pulse so that we can get the pulse shaping also so let's actually increase the sampling rate to let's say 192000 and let's limit our symbol rate to 8000 therefore we'll create another variable called SPS control F or command F will say variable we'll grab the SPS variable our SPS will be SAM rate double divide so that we get an integer 8000 next we will grab the RRC filter tabs control F or command F we'll say RRC so we have our RRC filter tabs here let's call these RRC underscore tabs and symbol rate is 8000 that gives us our RRC filter we'll then perform an interpolating FIR filter operation so we'll grab control for command F we'll say interpolating FIR filter and this interpolation is going to be SPS and the taps are going to be RRC taps. This is what we have been doing so far a very traditional approach to generating the sampling signal. We can view this on a QT GUI sync as well. So control F or command F will say FREQ and we'll get the QT GUI frequency sync and we can connect it and if we view this you will find that you are using the bandwidth between say minus 8 to minus 4 to 4 kilohertz rather if you want you can just perform uh, an amount of averaging and if you perform the average you will see that you are using somewhere between minus 4 to plus 4 of course there is a 1.3 factor because of the root trace cosine so it is going to be about minus 5 to 5 and this makes complete sense. Now our next task is going to be to view this in the context of the OFDM modulation. To perform OFDM modulation what we will do is we will take this output of the encoder or from the throttle and we will then perform an inverse discrete Fourier transform. As you have seen in the lecture the simplest way to implement OFDM is to take your symbols and to take an inverse DFT of those and then put them out. In this exercise you will find use for some new elements of GNU radio. 
let us first create a variable control f and say variable that defines the FFT size that we will use. So I'll call it FFT S I Z E. This is because it will be convenient to change later and we will set it to let's say 4. Now we will then just disconnect this over here and we need to perform the DFT over here and then in fact the inverse DFT and then pass it to this interpolating FIR filter. To perform the DFT we have the FFT block control F for command F will say FFT you have this FFT block under the Fourier analysis heading. Now unfortunately this FFT block takes the takes vector input not stream input. The reason for this is that FFT is essentially FFTs are essentially conducted on streams as opposed to just numbers. So in other words you have to group these in blocks of FFT size, pass it to the FFT block and then convert the output back to a stream and then view it in the frequency sync. Now this operation is going to require a bit of work because you cannot directly connect the throttle over here because a vector cannot be convert, uh, you know, converted to a stream directly or a stream cannot be converted to a vector directly. Therefore, let us first perform a stream to vector operation. So I'll do f uh, control F or command F. I'll say STREAM. We'll say stream to vector. If I say stream to vector and double click on the stream to vector and I say number of items as 4 and I connect this over here of course I must not just make the number of items 4 number of items should be 4 and the vector length to be 1 and then over here in the FFT block we need to make some changes the first thing is that the FFT size we will set to FFT S I Z E. Then we want the inverse DFT so we will set this to reverse. Next by default the FFT block uses a Blackman Harris window that essentially alters the way you see the spectrum. This is very useful when you perform spectral analysis but in this case we want to just view the spectrum directly so we will set this to just all ones so we'll say square bracket 1 times FFT size that will give us an all ones of FFT size length. Shift essentially performs a rotation of the FFT so that it's easy to view. We don't want any shift. Okay so now you can see that the connection is proper. Now after performing the inverse DFT we can connect this back over here using a vector to stream. So you have a vector to stream block and you connect the vector to stream block over here, double click the vector to stream, set the number of items as FFT size and you are set. Now the stream to vector should not be 4, it should be FFT size so that we can change it wholesale. Now if you execute the flow graph you get a similar spectrum which makes sense because you're essentially sending very similar data. But it would be useful to see how our symbols appear or how the spectrum appears if we just switch on and switch off different parts of the frequency range. To do this we have we can use multiple approaches. I'm just going to use an approach wherein I'm going to demultiplex the stream and then multiplex it back to take only certain parts of the subcarriers. Let me explain what I am going to do. I am first going to place 4 QT GUI ranges. So control F for command F. I will say range and I am going to switch on and switch off each of these FFT size, each of these 4 streams. So I will double click this. I will call this S1. I am going to set the default value to 1. Start at 0, stop at 1, step 1. So this is like an on off switch. I'm going to create four copies of this control C control V control and control V again and control V again. I'm going to call this 
S2. I'm going to call this S3. I'm going to call this S4. Now, I am going to first enable and disable these streams using these ranges. So let's split this over here by deleting this and do control for command F. We'll say stream demux. A stream demux takes a stream and outputs them in parallel so that you can perform operations in parallel. Let's move this to make some space. Let's actually move this to the side. We'll double click the stream demux. We want FFT size number of outputs and the lengths are square bracket one times FFT size. What this will do is this will take the stream and split it into four parallel elements. Now if I connect the output of my modulation here, I now have the demuxed values. I can then find a stream multiplexer by just searching for stream mux and just perform the inverse operation. Let's do a bit of neatness later. Let's make this neat later. Now this stream mux, I will double click once again. I'll call it square bracket one times FFT size. Number of inputs to be FFT size. And connect this stream mux output here. Now in between these, I'm going to switch these on and off using these ranges. So what I will do is I will create four constant sources which act as multipliers. So I'll do control F for command F. I'll say multiply const. Okay. And I'm going to just double click on this const and say this call this S1. Connect this over here, connect this over here. I'll do control C, control V. This is the second one, control C, control V. Third one, control C, control V. Fourth one, this should be S2. This would be S3. This would be S4. Connect them out. Connect this. And connect this over here. Now if I execute this flow graph, you can now see the same spectrum, but let's switch off everything first by making everything zero. First you see that there is no spectrum. Let us now switch on only S1. Now if you switch on S1 and let's make the averaging high, you can see that the part of the spectrum that is being used is only near zero. and it's actually occupying only about one fourth of the spectrum, which makes sense. Now you can see this shape. If I now just make the second one on, you can now see a similar shape that appears. However, it appears at around two kilohertz, which makes sense because we are splitting it. We can split, we're splitting essentially the spectrum into four parts. The third one, if it is on alone, appears split. It appears at the end, about half of it appears near the 4 kilohertz mark, the other half appears near the minus 4 kilohertz mark. This is an artifact of the sampling theorem. That is something which you've seen in DSP and makes sense. Now the next one will appear at around minus 2 kilohertz. Let's check. So now if you see the center, it's around minus 2 kilohertz. Therefore, what this has essentially done is that you have split this particular uh, uh, signaling method into four parallel subcarriers. Now, one thing to check is what happens if there are more subcarriers. Now, an easy way to do this would be to just increase FFT size over here. If you, we can make this, let's say, 8. Now, unfortunately, in case of 8, you need more, uh, you know, more ranges and more uh, kind of um, constants to multiply. Let's actually go ahead and do it. So I'm just going to take copies of this. Okay, I'm just going to select all these. Hit Control 
C and control V will give me the copies. I'll just place them to the right. I'm going to call this S5, uh, S5. This is S6. This is S7. This is S8. And then I'm just going to add four more multiply constants. So control C, I'll do control V. Control V, Control V, Control V. Now let us connect the out 4 over here and make this S5, out 5 over here, make this S6, out 6 over here. Make this S7, out 7 over here, and make this S8. Everything checks out now. We can execute our flow graph once more. Now, executing our four flow graph, let's keep only S1 on. So, I'm going to reduce this, reduce this, 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 this. Let's increase the FFT averaging. Window, we want none, of course. I think that's another thing. So we can double click on the FFT. Yeah, window is fine. So, with the averaging, you can see that this spectrum is definitely narrower than earlier. This is around zero. Now, if I look at the second one, it comes up around 1 kilohertz. So you are breaking 8 kilohertz into 8 parts. So the second center is along 1 kilohertz. The third one is at around 2 kilohertz. Let's check the center. It's at 2 kilohertz. The fourth one will be at 3 kilohertz roughly. The fifth one will be split between 4 and minus 4 as you can clearly see. This is again an artifact of the sampling theorem and it, if you remember your DSP, the way you compute the DTFT, it's between minus pi and pi and repeated. That's why this happens. And therefore, you are able to see that you have effectively parallel, parallelized the channels and this spectrum essentially confirms that we are able to put our data in parallel. So now that we have done this, we are now clear that using OFDM makes your data appear in the frequency. It uses the same spectrum. It doesn't have any other spectral characteristics that are altered, but the data appears in the frequency domain and is split in such a way that the channel essentially is parallelized. Our next aim would be to confirm the equalization ease of OFDM wherein we will make sure that even in the presence of a channel we are able to use OFDM effectively to equalize using one tap equalization. In this, in this case to keep things simple let us perform a symbol equal to sample rate that is we will assume there is one symbol per sample simulation. We'll quickly do the same things we do by adding a random source and a constellation. So we'll talk about command F, random source. We'll make this four byte and we'll have a constellation. Constellation object, constellation encoder. Connect the encoder. We'll call it my const. We haven't created it yet. Copy this, call this my const, and our constellation is ready. We'll add a throttle. Now we need to perform convolution along with a channel. But remember, when you have a channel, you need to also add a cyclic prefix that accounts for the channel. Let us assume that the channel will have 
at most three tabs. So let's create a channel control F for command def. We'll say variable. And let's say that our channel is called H and its value is let's say 1.0, 1, 1 uh, 0 0.2 plus 0.3 J, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.05. J. This is our baseband channel, let us say. And we are going to perform a convolution with this channel. Okay. So now we first have to add OFDM and our cyclic prefix has to have length at least 2. So let's do control F for command F. Let's bring in our stream Tmux. Okay. And uh, let's also have an FFT size variable, control F for command F. If, and sorry, we'll say variable. We'll double click. We'll call our variable at 50 size. Let's keep it at 8 currently. Okay, so now the lens 1 times FFT size, number of outputs FFT size. Uh, we don't need stream Tmux, we need only stream vector, I'm sorry, I'll delete this. So we just need control F for command F, we'll say stream, ah oh, sorry, we'll, uh, we'll say stream to vector, sorry. So we'll grab a stream to vector. This should be number of items FFT size. Next we'll grab the FFT block, control F for command F, we'll say FFT. Of course, we need to set the FFT size based on our variable. Only then the stream will be accepted. We'll set this to reverse. We'll set this to square bracket 1 times FFT size. Shift should be no. The FFT is set. Now, we will convert this back to a stream but demultiplex it. So control F for command F. We'll say vector to stream and then we will have to set this to FFT size and then we should demultiplex this so that we can add a cyclic prefix. So I'll do control F for command F. We'll say stream demux. Now let's actually do one thing. Let's actually use the let's actually use the arrow keys to rotate this. So I'm just going to use the right arrow key to rotate this and I'm going to use the right arrow keys to rotate this. This stream dmux will have length square bracket 1 times FFT size and number of outputs will be FFT size. Okay, so let's make this little more visible. Now Let's actually rotate this once more. Okay. Now I need to add a cyclic prefix, which means I am going to add a stream mux that has extra places where I can add the cyclic prefix. So I'm just going to grab a stream mux. I'm going to double click this. And let's say my cyclic prefix length is 3. So I'm just going to say length is square bracket 1 times FFT size plus 3 and this should be FFT size plus 3. So now I am going to get this big stream mux which has FFT size plus 3 length. I will use right arrow key to rotate it, left arrow key to rotate it. Now I am going to connect the back parts directly because the cyclic prefix comes in the front. Once you connect the back parts, you can then connect the out 7 back to in 2, out 6 back to in 1, out 5 back to in 0. This essentially has brought you the cyclic prefix. Why? Because you have the actual symbols prefixed with the last 3. This will ensure that performing the convolution does not affect you. Now we can bring in the channel, control F or command F, we'll grab the interpolating FIR filter. And this, of course, the interpreting fire filter also has to be rotated. So left arrow, left arrow twice. 
and the taps are H that performs the convolution and now we have the output and we will add noise control F for command F we'll say noise we'll grab a noise source we'll use the left arrow to rotate the noise source also the add control F for command F will say add rotate this also the noise source will have noise std as its amplitude we need a range control F for command F we'll say range this range has noise std as its standard deviation default value 0 start at 0 we'll start at 0 0.01 stop at say 3 and step 0 0.01 default value should be 0 0.01 and start at 0. I think this is fine. Now we have the noise source as well and then we have our output. Now we know that our output is going to definitely get affected by the channel. Now our next task is let's move the constellation object over here so that we get some space. Let's move this. Okay. Yeah, now we have a better flow graph. Now at the receiver, our first task is to remove the cyclic prefix and then perform equalization. But we will we'll show that the equalization is going to be very simple because it's just a single tap equalizer. Now, again, there are now two ways to remove the cyclic prefix. One is to again do a stream demux and then take these, take the multiple sources of FFT size plus three sources and then put three of them to the to a null source and then get it back but we're actually just going to take a simpler approach so i'm just going to use a, a key block called keep m in n control f for command f i'll say keep m in n this keep m in n i'll rotate it is an interesting block it allows you to keep only m out of n elements starting with an initial offset in our case the first three elements of every block are always going to be the cyclic prefix. So what I can do is I can start with an initial offset of 3 and keep only FFT size out of FFT size plus 3 elements. So if I connect this I have removed my cyclic prefix. Then my only remaining task is to take the FFT and then get see what I get back. So I'm going to go a little bit down okay, and I'm going to just do a control F or command F. I'll say stream to vector. I'm just going to take the stream to vector and use the right arrow to rotate it. Connect the stream to vector over here. Double click. This will be FFT size. Then I'm going to grab an FFT block and just reverse it. Control C and control V. Now this FFT block, I will double click and instead of reverse, I'll say forward. Then again, I will grab the vector to stream, control C, control V, rotate it to the appropriate direction. And then I'm now going to view these eight constellations separately on a QTGUI constellation sync. So control F for command F as a QTGUI and there is a constellation sync over here and here is the thing I'm going to double click this and I'm going to say number of inputs is 8 and now I'm going to demultiplex this stream and view them so I'll just copy this control C control V I'm just going to rotate this and I'm going to demultiplex and view these streams on a single constellation sync Now, after connecting these, we are set. We can run this flow graph. Okay, we get some pattern. Okay, of course, one issue with the uh, is that all these seem to have the same kind of uh, color. Uh, to do that, you can double click on this and you can essentially just go to the configuration and change the color. So first is blue, second is red, let's say third is green, 
फोर्थ इज ब्लैक फिफ्थ इज साइन सिक्स इज लेट से मैजेंटा सेवेंथ इज आई थिंक विल से डार्क रेड एंड एट विल से डार्क ब्लू आई थिंक विल सेटल विद दिस नाउ फॉर एग्जीक्यूट द फ्लो ग्राफ now there is a scaling issue because uh, the fft scales the output and we haven't really handled the scaling but let's look at only one of these by changing this interestingly you see a qpsk like constellation that is rotated now a rotation of a qpsk constellation as you are aware all you need to do is a single multiplication to derotate let's look at the second stream aspect that also has a qpsk like constellation the third one again a rotated qpsk constellation the fourth one is also a rotated qpsk constellation so the impact of the inter symbol interference introduced by the channel is not at all significant because you only need to do a scaling of this output in order to recover it of course as you can see the amplitude of some of these is higher or lower than the amplitude of others this is because the channel in the frequency domain exhibits frequency selectivity that causes some parts of the signal to be better than others so therefore different sub carriers have different weights but if you notice something carefully the amplitude of data 0 and data 1 will be close the amplitude of the sub carrier 2 and 3 will be close amplitude of 3 and 4 will be close amplitude of 4 and 5 will be close but the amplitude of the first and the let's say fourth may be different first and let's say the sixth are quite different the reason is because the channel varies gracefully in the frequency domain also and this is what is manifesting if you change the channel let's say we change it to something more like 0.7 plus 0.7j and minus 0.1 let's say minus 0.4 now you have a different channel and with this different channel you will see again different characteristics let's look at the sub carriers one by one this is one second third fourth fifth sixth you can see that it's very weak seventh is also weak eighth is here now if you don't believe me that this is some you know this is working very well just to make you believe it let's look at another constellation let's choose qam 16 and then just verify that things are correct we'll just set the constellation to qam 16 and the random source to go from 0 through 16 and there's lots of dots let's view only one of them as you can clearly see this is a qam 16 constellation just rotated this is another qam 16 just rotated even this is a weak qam 16 just rotated this is also a very weak qam 16 just rotated so the magic of ofdm is that the parallelization of the channels essentially results in only single tap equalization being required and this greatly simplifies the equalization it's almost like your transmission is pre equalized without having to know anything about the channel so if you want to learn more about ofdm in gnu radio there are sophisticated ofdm implementations that perform allocation of your data to ofdm frames re transmission reception and all those that is something you can explore yourself in this lecture we built from scratch a simulation of a an ofdm system in gnu radio of course a baseband ofdm system and we saw that even in the presence of a channel when you have a channel the channels effect can be to an extent handled by making your bandwidth into several parallel narrow band channels using the dft we saw that whenever you sent any constellation because of the use of ofdm and because of the conversion of the the channel into several narrow band um narrow band channels each sub channel or sub carrier underwent only a multiplication effectively by a complex number which is e easier to equalize therefore ofdm can be used to effectively translate a wide band channel with frequency selectivity into several narrow band channels which have roughly frequency flat nature which makes it very very useful to uh, a useful kind of standard and which is why it is used in several uh, you know useful wireless and wired standards in fact wifi lte and several other modern wireless standards also employ ofdm to good effect thank you